Greetings to those who watch below. It's Friday, which of course means it's time for another stop on our US paranormal road trip, and today we're heading to Wisconsin. But before we start, I'd like to say thank you to those who dwell below. They are Steffi Ray, Wicked Witch, Lisa Watts, Lefty Kim, M.A. Way, Julie B, Jess Black Curtain, Christina Groves, Chris BLK Chris, Canopsia, Tegan S, The Real CFED 22, Tassos Karamaris, and LT Punisher 666. If you'd like to join them and get shout outs at the start of every video, make sure to check out the link in the description box. You can also find me on Instagram at brimstone underscore below, and on Facebook at brimstone below horror channel. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Most Haunted Wisconsin This happened in 2012, in Rothschild, Wisconsin. So, my stepfather was diagnosed with brain cancer. My family and I were looking for a house. We came upon a nice house in a nice neighbourhood for a steal. It was just $1,200 a month for a four-bed, three-bath home with everything you could want. It was recently built and was just massive. I had been there a little while and weird things started happening, like my stuff started going missing, things were turning on and off by themselves, and there were sounds of movement from different areas of the house. I had two siblings, so I just thought it was them and paid very little attention to it. Well, one night, I was home alone at the age of 15. I had my earphones in and was doing my homework, when a black figure came crawling into my room at me from my peripheral. It gave me a heart attack, and I told my black Labrador Jake that he was an ass. Well, lo and behold, my dog was downstairs with my parents. A couple of weeks later, I'm in the kitchen making myself a sandwich when I hear something burling down the stairs. I turn around, and it rounds the corner from the stairs leading upstairs, and there is what I can only describe as an oil black deformed Spider-Man with no face. As soon as I make eye contact with it, it crawled at me with such swiftness that I couldn't react. And I'm not gonna lie guys, I peed myself. I called my best friend crying and waited outside the house until she picked me up. A few days later, I found out about this part of town being on Native American burial grounds. So fast forward a few more weeks and I'm sitting in the living room and get this feeling of just dread sadness and defeat. And once again, I hear something running up the stairs, this time from the basement. This time the thing didn't stop to look at me, it just ran at me and I panicked. I didn't know what to do, but that thing would have been on top of me within three seconds. I finally told my mum that although my stepfather had cancer and needed treatment that was out of town, she couldn't leave me at home alone anymore. I felt safer even if I had someone with me, even my younger siblings. Me being a person who liked being alone, she didn't understand why. I finally told her what I experienced, thinking she would think I was crazy. My mum's eyes widened. I asked her what was wrong. Her response was, I've been seeing the same thing, Gabby. I don't know what to do. I have never seen her so fearful. Things became worse and eventually we moved out of the house shortly after, when my sister claimed to be pushed down the stairs, and my father's cancer started progressing quickly. Every time I think about this entity, I start having nightmares about it. Whitewater Whitewater, Wisconsin has a full list of creepy legends and folklore. The one that you hear first is about the witches of Whitewater, but there was also a man named Morris Pratt who made an institute all about spiritualism and psychic subjects that may have started off the talk of witches. In the late 1800s, it was considered fairly normal to try and speak to ghosts. Spiritualism is a belief or religion based on talking to the dead, but more so through mediums. Spiritualism's birthplace in the US is considered to be in New York, but it migrated into Wisconsin with the help of Morris Pratt. 1889 was the year that Morris Pratt's house was built in Whitewater, Wisconsin. 
it was the most expensive home in town, which included two auditorium halls, where one could seat nearly 400 people. However, his idea generated into an institute of spiritualism, which started in 1901. The school remained in business for 40 years, but was later turned into a telephone office. In 1946, the institute was moved to Milwaukee, where it resides today. The building of the Morris Pratt Institute was when the tales of the town started as well, and Whitewater came to be known as Second Salem. Well-known stories of the Witch's Triangle and the Witch's Tower are still tossed around by locals today. Calvary Cemetery, Oak Grove Cemetery, and Hillside Cemetery are said to be the end points of the Witch's Triangle. The locations of the cemeteries make a perfect isosceles triangle, which can be connected back to witchcraft. One story is said that in the 1970s, a coffin of a little girl was placed on campus on Halloween week. It was thought to have come from one of the three cemeteries. Oak Grove Cemetery is where Mary Worth is buried. She is known for being an axe murderer, and is said she can be seen on Halloween Eve among the gravestones. The Stone Water Tower in Star Inn Park has a history of witches circling the tower and performing rituals. The spiked iron fence could also be seen as keeping something inside, instead of keeping others out. It's said that on Halloween Eve you can also see witches or ghosts outside of the tower at night. Though most locals usually see college students out there at night. However, the witches or spirits could just be waiting inside the tower for a brave soul to join them. Whatever your thoughts are on spiritualism and witches, there is no question that it hasn't had a huge impact on the town of Whitewater itself. Their history is deep with the stories and legends which livens up a rather boring small town. Maybe not everything in this town is what it seems, and maybe you can catch the sight of some witches if you were to ever visit there on Halloween. The Highway Q Phantom This story dates back a couple of years, but I remember the events as clear as day. It was during spring break, so somewhere around mid-March. I had driven a friend back to their house in Waukesha and had taken Highway 164 North to where it intersected with Highway Q and turned towards Menomone Falls, where I and the other friend of mine in the car live at. Highway Q is a relatively busy road during the day, but at night it can be dark and gloomy, in between settled areas. We came up on the town of Colgate, which is a really small town. The train tracks are on the east end, and we had just crossed them. We were doing about 45 miles per hour on the stretch between the tracks and Bases County Market. After Bases, there is an intersection for Town Line Road and a BP station. Memory fails me as to exactly where on that stretch we were, but there was another car coming in the oncoming lane, and I had just switched off my high beams when I noticed a shape in the road ahead. It looked to be a human shape, and regular human height, maybe a little bit taller. The shape was pure black, and I had enough illumination from the other vehicle to notice that I couldn't pick out any distinguishable features. It didn't walk, no. It moved like it was gliding, and went straight across my lane and into the cornfield on the south side of the road. This was before we crossed Town Line Road. I was carrying on a conversation at the time, and my first instinct was to pause and look. But my friend who I was with is extremely sensitive to spirits. I had been really sleep deprived that week, and I didn't want to look like I was completely nuts, so I kept on talking like nothing had happened. About a quarter minute after we had passed where it had been, though, she says, Did you see that? I knew at that moment that I had seen my first apparition. We had the heat on in the car because it was still cold out in March of that year. The heat was not on full blast by any means, but my car heats pretty well on the low setting. For the next couple miles down the road, it was ice cold in the vehicle, and the heat was on. About a week later, the same friend and I parked down on Colgate Road, near where the road ends and a small park begins. 
we were looking for more clues to what we had seen. My friend and I walked towards the train tracks, and a fog rolled in from seemingly nowhere. It was so thick that seeing much of anything became a challenge, and yet down the tracks we could see a light. It was nearby and looked like a lantern light almost. We turned and ran for the car, at which point I discovered upon turning the ignition that it was having trouble started. It finally did after a few minutes. I've heard numerous theories about what the Highway Q Phantom might actually be. Some have said that it was an accident victim from a crash, which I'm sure there have been a few along that stretch, while some have gone so far as to say that it was a fallen angel or another dark spirit. The Beast of Bray Road The Beast of Bray Road, also known as the Bray Road Beast and the Wisconsin Werewolf, is a purported humanoid wolf-like creature allegedly witnessed in or near the rural community of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. It has since become a part of folklore and has been the subject of multiple books, documentaries and a 2005 horror film. Named for the farm road in which it was first allegedly sighted, Bray Road, reports of the creature in the 1980s and 90s prompted a local newspaper, the Walworth County Week, to assign reporter Linda Godfrey to cover the story. Godfrey was initially sceptical, but later became convinced of the sincerity of the witnesses. Her series of articles later became a book titled The Beast of Bray Road, Tailing Wisconsin's Werewolf. Reports of a similar creature in the neighbouring state of Michigan also tell of an alleged wolf-like humanoid, the Michigan Dogman. The Beast of Bray Road is most often described by alleged witnesses as large, between 6 and 7 feet tall, with a humanoid-style body, covered in fur or hair, and a head resembling a wolf or a bear. It is purported to have been seen moving both as a quadruped and a biped, and some reports describe it more closely resembling a traditional werewolf or Bigfoot. The creature was allegedly first sighted in 1936. In the 1980s, several alleged witnesses reported the beast had made contact with their vehicles, leaving long scratch marks on doors and trunks of the vehicles. One witness stated she hit something while crossing Bray Road. Upon exiting her vehicle to determine what she had hit, supposedly a large wolf-like creature with red eyes chased her back into her car, leaving claw marks in the rear passenger door. Sightings have also been reported during daylight hours, with several witnesses stating they observed an unusually large wolf-like creature running on all fours through cornfields. One stated the creature was in pursuit of a deer. Animal mutilations have also been reported in the area around Bray Road, with animal remains, including deer and livestock, partially eaten, with specific organs removed from the animal carcasses. Another witness reported driving down Bray Road late one night and observed an unusually large wolf-like creature eating an animal which had been hit by a car on the side of the road. The creature reportedly ran into the woods as the eyewitness approached it in their vehicle. Reported sightings continue. The most recent ones have been in February 2018 and July 2020, when witnesses observed a large, hair-covered upright creature in Spring Prairie and Leon, both in Walworth County. A number of misidentified animal-based theories have been proposed, including that the creature is simply a grey wolf or a large dog, such as a Great Pyrenees or Newfoundland. While not common in the southern part of Wisconsin, Wolves are occasionally found in Walworth County and surrounding areas. It is also possible that hoaxes and mass hysteria have caused some falsehoods and sightings of normal creatures to be artificially lumped under the Beast of Bray Road label. Others have also theorised that the creature may be a bear suffering from mange. Like wolves, American black bears have been sighted in Walworth County. With dash cams and other technology becoming more prevalent in our cars, maybe soon we'll actually find out what the Beast of Bray Road actually is. The Roger Williams Inn 
About a month ago, my boyfriend and I went on a retreat in Green Lake, Wisconsin. We stayed on the grounds of a conference center, thankfully not in the building my experience happened in. I should explain that this was a religious event. My boyfriend and all of the friends I was with are very religious. I am not. I'm only just beginning to understand most of these things. I did explain to them what happened, and they told me, due to my apparent conversion, that it was a battle between God and Lucifer for my soul. Personally, I don't think so. My boyfriend was with me during the experience, and he claims it may have been something demonic. I do think I've had something attached to me for a while, but it's something I don't like to think about too often. We had gone away from the large group meeting because I had a headache and there was loud music playing. The building next door was the Roger Williams Inn, built in about 1930 or so. This property is very old and has been gradually built on for about 150 years. There's an old Civil War prison near the entrance to the conference center. This is where we had gone to register and where some of the seminars were held. The first floor had a split level hallway where bedrooms used to be. One of these empty rooms had been designated for prayer. There was nobody around, so we went in. We'd only been in there long enough to look around, and I had the feeling that something did not want me there. My boyfriend shrugged it off, and we sat on the floor in the middle of the room. He began praying, and no sooner had he invoked the name of God than I received a hard shove forward. Something had placed its hands on my shoulders and pushed me. There was no one else in the room. I sat facing the door and would have noticed if somebody had come in. I stood up and started gathering my things, blathering that I wasn't staying in there one second longer when I began to feel very nauseous. I dropped my stuff and bolted into the adjoining bathroom, dry heaving. He came in after me and asked if I was all right. I was perched on the edge of the tub coughing when a large chunk of plaster fell from the ceiling into the tub, inches from my head. As I said, this building is old and looks as though it's never been renovated. Parts of it are probably structurally unsound. My boyfriend eventually got me back out into the room and insisted that we pray together. After a few minutes, whatever it was dissipated and I was calm enough that I could get up and leave. A few nights later, I was sitting alone in our apartment, when I heard the sound of falling plaster from the bathroom. There is no plaster in our bathroom. The walls are concrete block, and the ceiling is tile. A while later, when he was back from work, I was sitting with my back against the arm of the couch, and something began pulling my hair. I'm a bit worried about this, because if it was what I think it is, or was attached to me, the last time it touched me, I ended up with bruises and scratches on my arms and body. I completely freaked out and started swatting at it, only to find nothing tangible there. My boyfriend grabbed my hands and again insisted on praying. It's gone for now, but I'm worried it might come back if it knows that I'm trying to figure out what it is. Hi guys, thank you so much for listening to today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So, until next time, sleep tight.